Hi guys, welcome to our lab today. Give me a second to get set up. If you have the supplies to do this lab at home, you're more than welcome. It's not hard to do food coloring. Um, a clear, kind of stained container. We're going to be using test tube in class, but let's see. What would we have at home? No, if you have something at home that maybe could take its place. Kind of skinny, or if you want to try this with um, a larger type of container, you're just going to need to make sure that you use more liquid than I do. So, what we've got here is a test tube, a pipette, which, if you were doing this at home, you could carefully put the water by yourself into and carefully pour the water into your container. And we've got different colors of water. They're just water, but they do have different amounts of salt in them. So my blue has um, three moles of salt. My red has two moles of salt. My green has one mole of salt, and my yellow orange does not have any salt at all. Here's what we're going to learn. Today, we're going to kind of discover, and you should have already watched the video lecture on uh, salinity in the ocean and how it kind of makes it move a little bit. But um, this is going to kind of try to help demonstrate that. So I want you to do as I do. We're going to try and discover how salt changes the density of water. Remember from our lecture yesterday, the density is just the amount of, sort of the amount of space or kind of how heavy is something, amount of space and how heavy something is. So something that is really dense is going to sink like a rock would sink in water. And something that is less dense is going to float like styrofoam, or even when we calculated our basketball, the density turned out to be about 0 0.07 grams per milliliter. But if the density of water is 1, then what we find is that the basketball will float. This is true, right? If you've ever played water basketball, your basketball doesn't sink to the ground. When you drop it, it floats. All right, so here we go. So we have, first I'm gonna take my most salt concentrated liquid and I cut it into my test tube. Okay, and I'm gonna do a little bit more than you would normally do. So if you were doing this in a cup, like the last cup, you would be putting a lot more liquid in than I am. You're going to want to be able to see the different colors. So I have now pipetted my blue or high salt concentration liquid into my test tube. Now I'm going to do the next one. And if you're doing this at home and recreating it, I would say you don't put any salt in this one. In this one, I put about one scoop of salt. This one has about two scoops of salt, and this one has about three. It's a nice, easy way to try and get your moles. The important thing is, if you're recreating this, that the water level that you have in each of them is the same. So then when the salt dissolves, it dissolves in um, different concentrations. Okay, so next I'm gonna pipette the next liquid into the water. I'm going to pipette it really slowly. And see what happens. My red liquid is in there. I'm going to add just a little bit more to it just so that we can see the end results. I've cheated and done this lab before. It's really important that you put it in slowly. Okay. So then I keep going down the line. I'm going to do some green.
And then I'm going to have to cut some yellow into there. So it's yellow, though. It has no salt in it. It's just tap water. Just came out of the sink. So, I'll try and closer to you all and see here. Here's my results. Oh. All right, here's my results. What you should see is that the water, if you've done pipetted them carefully, you can see I lost my patience at the end there because my, oh, that might be better because my green and my yellow mixed and my red just a little bit. But you can definitely see that my blue layer is at the bottom. Red, you can kind of see if you were in person with me, is on top of it. Green, just a little bit, like I said, it mixed because I got impatient. And then the yellow sits on top. So you see a distinct separation of those liquids. It has something to do with salinity, hopefully. This lab helped you figure out the relationship between salinity and density. We actually see that as the, um, sorry, as the salt concentration increases, so does density. So de density and salt have a positive or direct relationship with one another. Let's try this one. So I'm going to cut that some colored yellow water with no salt in it first. And actually, why not? of salt and tell me what happens when I pipette. So what we would expect if these had the same densities would be that my pipetted water is going to just sit on top or we're going to have a mix, but let's see what happens. You see where my water is gathering? You see where the salt water is going? For the most part, the salt water is gathering at the bottom. If you would have been in the classroom with me, you would have seen it shoot straight down to the bottom of the test tube. But then it started to dissociate and blend together. Having an eruption. I have a new link in my OG for me, by the way. I'm working on it to take over in the waiting room. I'm trying to get there myself. I'll be there just as soon as my computer will cooperate. Sorry. So, what you should see from this, and if you were doing it by yourself at home or following this, you would just see that salinity and density have a direct relationship, meaning that the more dense my water is, or sorry, the more dense, the more salt I have in my water, the more dense it is. So, very salty water is going to tend to seep to the bottom, while less salty water will be on top. Though, if we do get a good motion going, it's all going to mix anyways. But that's that, pretty much. So if I asked you, and I can't remember what exactly is going on in your lab, but we'll find out eventually. So the least dense water that I have is my yellow right here. And the most dense water that I have is my blue one because it has the most amount of salt in it. That's why if you've ever been to like the Dead Sea, which any of you have, I have, but if you've ever seen the Dead Sea or the Salt Lake, in Utah, you actually float more easily on the salt lake because it is denser than actual water. Therefore, bringing your density down, it's going to be easier to float. So it's good news for those of you that can't float very well in the water. All right. And then if I ask you another question, like which one is more dense, my green 
For my red, you would tell me that the red is more dense because it has more salt. In a couple of lectures, we're actually going to see how this, these density differences, along with the density differences in temperature and water, lead to the currents that we see in our ocean. And right, have a great day, guys. Use this uh, lab to complete your lab sheet on canvas. Bye.